Never. No, she says she's going to Walmart. Just a wrap. Yes, just a wrap. Yes, we get that close. Well, she just remembered. Uh, we're a week away from Halloween. Uh, she's scared to death to take a car. So she won't start wrapping her things.
Hallelujah, I am rejoicing. 
speaking to that heart when you yes, try and speak to them mm-hmm. outwardly. <coughs> so just keep up your good work. You never know when it's going to pay off mm-hmm. and when they'll show up. So let's go to church. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 yeah. Let's go to church. Okay. Anybody else want to mention one? I'll organize your family to do it tonight. The word God is doing good. Just keep us in the prayer. Okay. We yeah. still have some unspoken requests. Okay. All righty. Girls are getting taller, I'm telling you, they're getting taller. <laughs> and the boys are too. Yeah. And this what Jeremiah is going to be, um, well, he turns 18 in a couple of weeks. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. Does he graduate and this year? And he graduates this year, yeah. So just yeah. pray for him. He, he is just, he has a plan, but you know how it is. So he's, he's still trying to figure him. things out, what he's going to do with you know, what direction to take. So just pray God guides him. Tell him we're going to get him a graduation Bible. I will. That's right. I will. He graduates June the 8th as his graduation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Amen. I'll write that down. June yeah, that is a big accomplishment. <laughs> Amen. For him. He's had to work very hard. Very hard. This day and time, you get him in the high school, through the high school you're doing good. Yeah, I feel that way too. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. Jeremiah. Okay, June the 8th. Who else has one tonight? Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yeah
anybody else have a question? Jackie, how about Bobby? How's she doing? I want to say yesterday, she was doing pretty good. She was in and out a whole lot. But, uh, she was just doing pretty good. Well, we but sure pray for her. I heard on the news this evening that uh, the doctor had come out uh, with a shot. But they hadn't approved it yet before the city was going to hit all the time. Or really? You know, so, uh, so oh, that'd be great. great. I don't know when they'll release it or not, but uh, yeah. they said they just hope that it will work. Yeah, because right now there's not a whole lot they can do with them, is there? Yeah. No. It takes time to work. Some of them are probably working on it. Okay. Well, that's that's a good prayer answer there. Lord, they use medicine, but he does the healing. Amen. Amen. Sure. There's many characters all good. Yeah. <laughs> be 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 yeah, then it cheats way out. Yeah. Yes, sir. I did some, there's a natural one that I didn't read it all on the surface. Mm-hmm. Just put it in one dollar and it does it all Okay. All righty. Anybody else? Huh? Charles, how about your family? We're a week away from Linda going back for her follow up, and she's trying to be good. She wants to be here. Uh, for sunrise on Sunday morning. So uh, she's trying to be good. Then she immediately said she's going to Walmart tomorrow. So, <laughs> she's doing a whole lot. She's right now. We'll see what happens in the morning. Yeah. 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 She's doing a whole lot. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, notes that told what all the side effects were. Right. And there are so, so many side effects that she doesn't know what to do. But anyway, everybody's checking. She's going to check with her medical doctor. But she needs the Lord to guide her on this. Amen. Said she's real high risk for breaking bones. Continue praying for Chris Coburn. He's His heart is working. And he's diabetic. He's still in the hospital, I said. He is. And uh, anyway, to keep praying for him and his family. Okay. Anita's son, Freddie, needs our prayers, as well as the rest of her family. The Lord knows the problems there. Pray for Rosalie Ring and her family. She's just got so much going on. She's asked me to pray for Alden Lee. Yes. And definitely pray for Chris Ring. Amen. The Lord knows all of the problems there. Mm. Please pray for my daughter, Melissa Farlow, for job security. They found out this week they're going to let eight of her 22 team go mm. next week. They just walk in, or somebody sends them a letter and said, get your stuff and go home. That's terrible. And there's eight of these people. So pray for them. And that sort of touches my heart, and it does hers too, because she went through this when she worked, when she was young, before she ever went into the insurance business. Right. They just came in, a big company came in and told them, you're going to get all these benefits just three months. You're going to start over as a new employee, but you're going to have all this just three months. Two and a half months later, they came in and said, get your stuff and go home. Now, don't take anything, and, uh, uh, even a uh, paper clip. Goodness. And then she was, I guess she was 21, but sure was devastating to her. Sure. These, these folks may have families, I don't know, but please pray for them and all the people. But I think that's the way the big companies do. Just, I don't tell them, said somebody where her brother-in-law worked. They didn't even call him. He went to work one morning and the gates were locked. They couldn't get in. Good. And so. They did that at Craftsman several, several years back. Well, I, it's, it's hard. It's hard for oh, these yeah. people, especially with family. Yeah. All right. And then just keep praying for, I didn't go through all of our people, but, you know, just pray for all that we've had on the prayer list. It's hey. still in need of prayer. Amen. As well as we are in need of prayer. Yes. That's thank true. you, thank you, Lord, for taking care of us, <coughs> being there for us. Amen. I do have one more. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, my brother that lives in Lumberton, um, he just found out this back in the April, and they're going to take him next Wednesday and put him to sleep and shock his heart. So just keep him in your prayers, please. Okay. Mike Wardway. Mike. And please keep Mike Hardway hard in your prayers. He's back in eighth bed, and they're going to take him next Wednesday and put him to sleep and shock his heart. So I pray that this will take care of the situation. Amen. It's your will. Keep him in our prayers. Okay? All right. Any others? Yes. Okay. How about uh, unspoken? Unspoken requests? All right. Let's go to the Lord and remember all these unspoken requests. And Joe, won't you lead us in prayer down in the back, if you will? Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we pray that you will remember all these people who have been here tonight. Uh, everybody, I know, Linda, and everybody else, pray that you look down and pray to heal their bodies and take care of their wills and look after them. Pray to help us all to do our best to serve you. Don't forget, we're gathering candy for the Easter egg hunt. And we're going to meet this Sunday at 5 o'clock in the afternoon for those who would like to help cook the 
breakfast for that morning. We're going to start around 8.30 and then eat about 8.45 and then be ready at 10 o'clock for our service. Uh, so that's how it's going to work this year. 8.30 is not too early, is it? Not too bad. <laughs> I believe everybody can get up and, and be here and have a good time. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, don't forget we're trying to get some people to help mow the grass. If you could do that, you can sign up there in the back. And I've got several people signed up for baptism, and we're looking forward to that. If you'd like to be baptized, you can sign up in the back, okay? You have a date on that. I had not put the date down. I'm just going to work with the people that sign up. And uh, get one where they all can be fitted into it. Yeah. Yeah. While I'm thinking that, we'll be here for sunrise, but now we'll be doing the 11 o'clock. So I won't be here for the 11 Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's about all the announcements. Let's go ahead and take the offering up then. And if y'all come, we'll go ahead and receive a Wednesday night offering. Let's pray for our country. Pray for our leaders. We need it. Yeah. Uh, we need all kinds of help in our country, don't we? Amen. Don, you lead us, if you will. Lord, we just thank you for this time to come together. Lord, we thank you for all your many blessings for getting us through this part of the week. We're just praying now that you build us up and we can go on and do the rest of the week, Lord. Yes. Always pray to your name and put you first. Do this offer, Lord. We just pray that you bless the gift and the giver. Help us to be honest with it and do your work. In Jesus' name.
like when they happen. Other things you don't understand until later on. And I believe there's going to be some things you won't know until you get to heaven. <laughs> and he'll answer all the questions. And there'll be answers that probably will surprise you. The Lord knows he was doing something that we didn't even think about. Okay, we're continuing here in the event of Jesus sending out the 72. And uh, this is a pretty good group of people going out door by door, two by two, and uh, trying to reach people for Christ. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And we've seen that. Every church sees it. Uh, We always pray for more harvesters, more workers, that we can see more people saved. Luke chapter number 10. Luke chapter number 10 there. We'll read just a portion of this. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse number 1, And after these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes. Salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, First say, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn you to you again. And the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Since when you find a good place, stay there. And uh, get you a good cook that's going to fix you some good homemade pinto beans and some uh, steaks or hamburgers or whatever you like, uh, they'll fix you some of that. Amen? Yes. And if you find one that can fix that kind of good home-cooked food, stay there. Into what service city ye enter, and they receive you to eat such things that are set before you. Now, if you don't know what it is, don't ask. <laughs> You might be in trouble. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Jesus sends out these 72 and they're going to town. He tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. Love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, this is a, a, a parable that shows us who our neighbor is. Who is our neighbor? Well, anybody that needs help. Luke chapter number 10, verse 25, down through verse 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered again, and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength and with all thy mind. And then love your neighbor as what? Yourself. Yourselves. Right. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down into, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. They stripped him of his raiment. They wounded him. And then they departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And you would think the priest, who was the preacher of the day, would be willing to help the man. But when he saw him, he went over on the other side. He said, I'm not getting close to him. He's been beaten up badly. I'm going to have to stay away. That is sad. Then in verse number 32, And likewise a Levite, from which the priest 
Cain. That's the Levitical tribe. All the priests came from. It says, Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side as well. He looked down and saw that blood and saw all that suffering. And this man had been beaten up to a pulp. And they just, both of them went right around him. These are religious rulers of Jerusalem. Then there was a certain Samaritan. Now, you have to think about the Samaritan. Because the Jewish people hated the Samaritans. Does anybody remember why the Jews hated the Samaritans so badly? They're half-breeds. They're half-Jew and they're half-Assyrian. And so the Jews looked down upon the Samaritans. But Jesus says, wait a minute, there's a Samaritan man. Oh, I know he's half-breed. I know you don't like him. But he says here in this passage to these people, when he was at the place, he came and looked on him. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, bound up his wounds. He poured him some oil and wine. He set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, or the next day when he departed, he took two pence, which is two days' wages, gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three think, thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Be like the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. Jesus visits the home of Martha and Mary of Bethany. Mary has chosen what's the better part. We've talked about this one several times. They have a brother that was bought, brought back from the grave. Who was that? Lazarus. Lazarus, right. Who sat at the feet of Jesus, Mary or Martha? Mary, Mary did. What did Martha do? Cook. She was serving in the kitchen. She got mad and asked Jesus, why don't you let Mary come in here and help me? And Jesus said she had chosen that good thing. And that is to sit at the feet of Jesus. Then another event here. Jesus teaches about courage, true riches, recognizing the times. Don't worry. Be rich towards God. And that you find in Luke chapter number 12. Verse number 1, Luke chapter 12, verse number 1. In the meantime, they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another. And he said unto the disciples, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, for there is nothing covered that should not be revealed, neither hid that should not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness, it's going to be heard in the light. And that which you've spoken in the ear and in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, but after that have no more that they can do to you. Would it be better to have somebody kill the body and let the soul live forever? Or would it be better to to keep the body but lose your soul. Right. See, the soul lives forever, not the body. But one day we'll get a body that will live forever and ever. I say to you, friends, be not afraid of them that will kill the body. But I forewarn you that when ye shall fear, fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Sounds like Jesus believed in hell, doesn't he? Yeah. Not a lot of people are getting away from that. They don't like to talk about it, but Jesus did. And so are there not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye therefore ye are of much more value than the sparrows. I thank God he knows where every one of my hairs are. Amen. <laughs> I've lost count years ago. But he knows where they are. One day I'll have a head of hair again. Yes. 
Jesus healed the crippled woman on the Sabbath day, his generosity towards her puts his opponents to shame. This you find in Luke chapter 13, verse 10. Luke chapter 13, next page over, verse number 10. He was teaching on one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. She had a good old Baptist shouting fit. Amen? Right. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, Hey, there are six days men ought to work, and in them therefore come and be healed, but not on the Sabbath day. Now, wait a minute. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite. He didn't cut any corners there. He just hit him right between the eyes. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or if his ass from the stall and lead him to get water? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, that Satan hath bound, 18 years be loosed in this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he had said these things, all of his adversaries, they were what? Shame. shame. They were ashamed. All the people rejoiced because Jesus got them. <laughs> Jesus put it right there where it needed to be put. He told them what was the main objective is to help those around you. Sabbath day or no Sabbath day. If you can take a donkey and give him water on the Sabbath day, Surely you can heal a woman that's been bound by Satan 18 years. Here's the next event. Jesus heals a man born blind. That's in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. He said, I am the light of the world. And he was healed. I think we looked at that one last week, so we'll move on. Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. He said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I think we looked at that one as well. Here's an event. Some try to kill Jesus for blasphemy. And he says, I and my Father are what? One. We're one. You talk about the Father. You talk about God. Well, we're one. And that tells you right there, Jesus, he proclaimed to be God, didn't he? Yeah. He said, we are one. John chapter 10, verse 22. When he was at Jerusalem on the feast of the dedication, it was winter. Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. He said, I've told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not. Because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Thank God in verse number 28. I give them eternal what? Life. Life. How long is that? Forever. Forever. Eternal. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Okay, Jesus teaches about entering into the kingdom of God. You have to enter through the narrow door. Luke chapter 13. Go back, if you will, to the left. We'll look at it just for a moment. Luke chapter number 13, verse 22. The Bible talks about two roads. The narrow road that leads to life and the broad road, the wide road that leads to eternal damnation. Which road are most people taking today? The broad road, the wide road. Very few are taking the narrow road when you look at society as a whole. You know, when you come to church, 
and you see people and you think they could be in church if they wanted to, but they'll be doing other things that they got a boat hitched up or maybe they're going to mow the grass and there's six other days you could do these things. But, you know, the Lord's Day is the Lord's Day. Yes. And uh, they, they could be there if they wanted to be in church. Yes, and so that's why he's talking about enter into the narrow door. Luke chapter 13, verse number 22. And he went through the cities and villages teaching, journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter at the straight gate. Make sure that you enter the right gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up, he shuts the door. You stand without, you knock at the door, saying, Lord, open the door. He will answer and say unto you, I know you not from whence you are. Then shall you begin to say, Well, we've eaten and drunken in thy presence. Thou hast taught in our streets. But he said, But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. And then what does it say? There shall be weeping, gnashing of teeth. Then they shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves will be thrust out. So he's teaching them make priorities out of God's work and what God can do for you. Make God your priority. When he's first, everything else falls into place. But if we allow someone or something to get in front of God, it's going to throw us way off the right road, off of the road that we need to be traveling on. Jesus mourns over Jerusalem. He said, I have longed to gather you your, as my children together. Why did he mourn over Jerusalem? Well, because he was a Jewish man. And the Jews there in Jerusalem, what did they do? They rejected him. He came unto his own, and his own what? Received him not. And that broke Jesus' heart. Jesus dines with some Pharisees, heals a man with a dropsy, and tells the parable of the great banquet. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and they that truly are humbled will be exalted. He's talking there about if you try to build yourself up, he'll knock the props out. <laughs> you found that to be the case? But when we are humble and let God take care of it, then he has a way of exalting us. And so he's in control. Promotion comes from the Lord, the Bible says. Promotion comes from the Lord. Jesus tells the large crowds what it means to follow him. Count the cost, he says. Carry your cross. Follow Jesus. Let's look over here at Luke chapter number 14 and verse number 25 to 35. Verse number 25, and there were great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, and brother and sister Jay and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now is he saying that we're supposed to hate mom and dad? No. He's saying that our love for him should outweigh any love for anyone else. Because when you love him the way you love supposed to love him, then he automatically gives you love for other people. The love of Christ is shed abroad. The Bible talks about he gives us a special kind of love for those around us. So count the cost. Jesus tells the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. This is the prodigal son. What happened with the prodigal son? 
He got in trouble, didn't he? Where'd he end up? In the pig pen, eating the pig slop. You got to remember, he's a Jewish young man. To the Jews, the pigs were unclean, and they didn't want to have anything to do with them. And here's a Jewish boy who left his daddy and went out into the world, and what happened next? Oh, yes, he got in the pig pen. They robbed him of everything he had, or so to speak, they were his friends as long as he had some money. But as soon as the money ran out, the friends ran out. That's not a real friend, is it? A real friend will love you regardless. And so we see here in this passage, he's telling this parable about this lost sheep and lost coin and then the prodigal son. Uh, let's see here. Let's move down to verse number 11. In Luke chapter 15. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that befalleth me. And he divided unto them his living. Now that was only supposed to be done after the father had passed away. So in a way he is really demeaning his own dad. Saying, I wish you were dead because I want my money. That's so sad, isn't it? no way to treat your dad or your mother. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He took his journey to a far country, and he wasted his substance with what? Riotous living. That means he had one big party after another with the money that dad had given him for his inheritance. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to the citizen of the country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. Look at this. He would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. That's a sad verse. Had to sit there and eat the pig slop. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and even to spare? And I'm perishing with hunger. I've lost 10 pounds. I'm, I'm just really dwindling away. <laughs> now, he probably lost a lot more than 10 pounds. I will arise and go to my father and will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the hired servants. So when he arose, he came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him, ran, kissed his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight I'm not even worthy to be called your son. That's what he said. But the father said unto the servants, Bring you the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Shoes on his feet. Now who is getting mad over all this? The brother. The brother, the brother gets mad because he says, I hadn't treated you this way. And you hadn't given me the best robe. You hadn't thrown me a party. <laughs> and jealousy. His daddy loved him and as much if not more than his other son. I mean, I'm sure he had a, a love for both of them. He was just glad his son was back home with him. That's what he was glad of. So he said, get the robe, put the ring on his hand, put the shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf. Kill it, lest we eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again, he was lost in his family. They began to be married. Now, could the man have been lost and got saved? Possibly. But one thing we do know, he was lost in his way of life, wasn't he? Yes. He was in the pig slop, eating with the pig pen and the pigs, and his daddy had to welcome him back into the family. 
So it might have been a double meaning here. He was lost, now he is found. Now his elder son in the field came nigh to the house, heard the music and the dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. Thy father hath killed the fatty calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was what? Angry. Angry. He would not even go in. I'm not going in there. The way he's treated us, there's no way. You know, we all could write a book on how to get back to somebody. Uh, you know, sometimes your mind plays tricks. and Somebody does something to hurt you, and you think, boy, I know I could do this, and that really get them. <laughs> but you know who's going to face the worst of it? You are. That person's probably out there enjoying life, not realizing that they've even done anything. And if they do, they don't know that you're upset with them. And if you are upset with them, let God take care of them. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. Thus saith the Lord. He knows how to take care of them. So he answered and said unto his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. You never gave me a kid. That's a goat, by the way. That I might make merry with my friends. And as soon as this younger son comes in, he devoured all the living that you had given him with harlots. And he killed for him the fatty calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is thine. That's a pretty good promise, isn't it? Yes. Everything I have is yours. And then verse 32, And it was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Thank God. The boy's found. We'll go to the last one here. Jesus tells the story of the beggar Lazarus the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. What happens here? Well, there was a rich man. He had everything you could think of. There was a poor man who ate of the crumbs off of the rich man's table. They both died. The poor man was a Christian man. He went to heaven. The rich man was not a Christian. He went to hell. Jesus told this story to tell us there is a place called heaven. There is a place called hell. Look in Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate, full of sores, desired to be fed with the crumbs that fell off of his table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. You reckon that was any comfort? <laughs> that might have been. Came to pass, the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And that's why we believe at death, angels carry the redeemed into the presence of God. Because these angels came right in and take, took Lazarus right up to meet the Lord. And so what happens next? The rich man dies, came to pass, the beggar died, he was carried by the angels, but the rich man dies and he was buried. Doesn't say anything about the angels carrying him in heaven. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. That tells us there is fire in hell. It's real. Whether people want to accept it or not, doesn't change the fact that Jesus said it's real. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime you receiveth good things, but now he is comforted, and you're tormented. And beside all this, between us, there's a great gulf fix so that you cannot come here and he cannot go there. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, 
that thou wouldest send him to my family's house, to my father's house. I've got five brethren. I want to see them saved before they come to this place of torment. And what Abraham said, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. What's he talking about when he says Moses and the prophets? The Old, Testament. Old Testament. Right. You got the word of God. Listen to the word of God. That's a great witness. That's the witness God gave. Moses and the prophets. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Is that true? <laughs> well, there was a man who was dead, and he appeared to a lot of people, and they wanted to kill him. His name was Lazarus. You remember that? And Lazarus came back from the dead, and the people wanted to kill Jesus, and they wanted to kill Lazarus because Jesus brought him back. I heard somebody say this years ago, if Jesus went to the Colosseum, you wouldn't hardly get enough to fill up the bottom area. <laughs> I don't know, but I'd go see him, wouldn't you? Amen. I'd want to see him. Yes. But the major, or the majority of the people probably wouldn't because they would be under condemnation. So he says in verse number 31, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. What's the authority? It's the word of God. Amen. There's your authority right there. Yes, sir. And you take that word, you use that word, and friends, God will do miraculous things through that word. Yes, sir. It's not how smart we are, it's how smart God is. Amen. That's what really counts. <clears throat> and all we got to do is use it sharper than a two-edged sword. It'll cut the bad out and put the good in. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's have a word of prayer and an invitation. Maybe tonight you'd say, Preacher, just pray for me. I've got a special burden on my heart. God knows all about it. I'd be glad to pray for you. You know, like that, you'd slip my hand up. Hands are lifted all around the room. Father, you've seen our hands. You know our hearts. Bless each one that have a burden. Bless those who raise the hand, whatever the need is. If there be one here that needs to make that decision for Christ, or one looking on by the way of internet, I pray they'll make the best decision they've ever made to come to Christ and be saved. Father, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand our feet while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and Charles can play softly on the uh, keyboard. As he does, if you want to come down and pray, you feel free to come. Maybe you want to just lay that heavy burden right there at the foot of the cross. God will take care of it. God knows how to do it. Maybe you want to come and pray for somebody else who's having a rough time. Come pray for the church. Come and pray for the ministry. Pray God will get the blessing. He'll get the honor and the glory. blood. Why is that? Blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us of all sin. have been swept over and cleaned by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's give them a big amen together. Ready? Amen. amen. Thank God for that salvation we enjoy.
Hope you have a great week, and I'm going to ask Brother Charles if he'll dismiss us in prayer. After he does, tell somebody you love him. Good to see him in church tonight. Brother. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be back in the house of God tonight. Lord, what a privilege it's been. Our hearts have been encouraged. Yes. I pray for every home that's represented here tonight, Lord. Give us safe traveling back to our home. Hey. And bring us back again to the next appointed hour. Lord, yes. just be with all those that made mention of earlier this evening. Lord, help fill this house one more time for your honor and for your glory. For it's in Christ's name. Amen. 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 We'll see y'all. Tell Jeremiah, say hey.
in the blood. 